I'm going to show you how to make a loaf of traditional sourdough bread. Those of you who have gluten sensitivities, this may be your lucky day. A lot of people that have bad reactions to commercial store-bought bread are able to eat this traditional bread without having any of those same problems. So I used to get my bread from the store, but I would notice that I would have these reactions, whether it was skin problems or stomach aches or headaches or an unnatural urge to wear jean shorts, you know, things that you just do not want happening. So obviously I stopped eating that bread. Um, just recently I watched a Netflix documentary called Cooked where they talked about the difference between traditionally prepared bread and commercially prepared bread. And the big difference is that with traditionally prepared bread there's a long fermentation process where the yeast breaks down the gluten in a way that makes it easier for your body to digest. In commercially prepared bread they use a quick rise yeast where the yeast is only in the bread an hour or so before it goes into the oven which is not enough time to break down the gluten compared to the long fermentation process in the traditional bread, which can take upwards of a day. I've been baking a loaf or two a week for the past three months now, and I haven't noticed any of those same reactions that I got from the store-bought bread. I mean, just look. No jean shorts. Sweatpants, though. That might be a different problem to address. There's so many people out there that identify as gluten-sensitive, and avoid bread altogether. So I thought this would be a cool video to share and hopefully we can add a beloved food group back into a lot of people's diets. Alright, let's get started. Let's take a look at our ingredients here. We have 530 grams of spelt flour. We'll be using 350 grams of water. Make sure you don't have any chlorine in your water and that it's at room temperature. We'll be using 10 grams of salt, preferably sea salt. We'll be using a quarter cup of yeast. I recommend you name yours. Mine is Frank. So yeast thrives off of sugar and in warm environments. If you're going through this fermentation process somewhere that's above 75 degrees or so, you may not need to add any of the sweetener to kind of boost the yeast. I'm gonna add three tablespoons to mine because it's a little cooler in here than I'd like. As far as equipment goes, we're gonna need two bread pans, two large bowls, a spoon, a plastic bag, some sort of surface to put the dough on, a cutting board works fine, or the counter if you like. And it's nice if you can have a scale so that we can measure out the ingredient exactly. If not, you can use a measuring cup. We'll start by mixing in the flour and the salt. Give it a nice stir to make sure that salt is mixed in evenly. Oh, look at that wrist action. Beautiful. Next, we will add in the water, the yeast, and the sweetener if you're using some. I would recommend using the sweetener just for your first loaf. You won't taste any of the sweetness. The yeast will eat it all. It's just a safe way to go to give your bread the best chance of turning out good. Make sure to stir up the ingredients so they're evenly dispersed. And we will add the flour and the salt into the wet ingredients. Stir those up nice and well until the dough forms. So I got this recipe from a different bread site and each time I've done it I've had to add in more water. We're really trying to get a wet shaggy dough and as you'll see not all the flour is covered. So what I do is go back and add another 10 grams of water and then I'll stir it up again and see where we're at and if we need to add more we'll add another 10 grams and so on. But I think we'll be good here with the 10 grams that we just added. See how the dough is evenly covered and it's nice and moist? That's what we're looking for. Next, we'll bag up the dough in our plastic bag and we'll let it sit somewhere warm for an hour and a half. I'm going to be sitting my dough on top of the fridge. That's usually a pretty warm place. Oh my gosh, look how dirty that is. Jimmy, cut away. Cut. Next, we'll do our first stretch and fold technique, first of three. You're going to want to lightly dust your hands with flour so that the dough doesn't stick. And then you'll stretch the dough out, tease it a little bit one way, turn it 90 degrees, and stretch it the other way. After 30 minutes, we'll do another stretch and fold technique just like this one. You'll let it sit for another 30 minutes again and do a final stretch and fold technique before putting it back in the bag to ferment overnight. It is now the next morning. As you can see, the dough has risen quite a bit in the bowl. 
We're going to do a fold and pinch technique here. It's a lot like the stretch and fold, a little more gentle and it'll create a nice seal on the dough. Lightly flour the surface that you're going to put the dough onto and also flour your hands a bit so it won't stick. And as the name implies, we're going to fold and then pinch. So you fold up all the way around. And then you do a nice pinch in the center to seal the dough. And what we're going to try to do is put that sealed side face down into the pan. This is easier said than done, as you can see. Let's go to the judges for this one. She hit her routine, but that dismount will cost her some valuable tents. Even out the dough in the pan, and then we're going to put it back into the plastic bag for an hour and a half to do the proofing. An hour and 15 minutes into the hour and a half proofing period, start to preheat the oven. Set it to 400 degrees and toss the other bread pan into the oven to heat up. Thumbs up if you have no idea what you're doing. Great. We'll be baking with the lid on for 35 minutes. Then we'll take the lid off and bake for a final 10 minutes. Let's take one final look at the dough before we put it in the oven. What we're going to do is take that bread pan that was preheating and use it as a lid on top of our other bread pan. Check often to make sure the lid doesn't fall off in the oven. When you take the lid off, turn the temperature up to 425. Looking good so far, but now it's time to get that nice golden brown crust. Time to take the bread out, and there's our finished product. Now this is the toughest part of the whole process. You have to wait an hour while the bread cools before you can eat it. Good luck. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make the wild yeast that we used in this recipe. And then we can get into all sorts of fun things, adding cinnamon, raisins, sunflower seeds to the bread. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.